Call this meeting to order, Fremont County Board of Commissioners. Uh, we're going to stand. I invite you to stand for an invocation of Bill Court from Village Missions and stay standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Again, I just want to say it's a privilege to pray for you all. We do it every day, and even today. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we do thank you for life. We thank you for the joy that comes that you. Let us live, live these lives in these communities. I pray for these commissioners. Wisdom, knowledge that they've gathered from you, from others. And I, I, I thank you not only for their work, but the, the others at this gathering today, the lawyers and the other people that help out in so many ways. But not only to them, but the people upstairs, across the street, our law officers, the sheriffs, and the deputies, and everybody that's involved in, in the law enforcement. We keep them in your safety as they travel many miles and do the things that they need to do. But not only that, we pray for our many men and women from um, Fremont County that are serving you in the United States military. Just keep them in your care as well. We do thank you for the freedoms we enjoy. So many, Father, and beautiful day you've given us, but more than that, the air we breathe and all the things we get enjoying. We do pray for uh, wisdom, guidance. We pray that, um, Lord, you will be glorified in all that we do. Again, we pray you for, praise you for the blessings that we have here, uh, the beautiful scenery here in Fremont County, and all the things that go on, Lord. May we just, again, praise you honor you with all that we have and all that we are in Christ's name. Amen. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner Payne. Present. Commissioner McFall. Present. Commissioner Bell. Present. County Attorney Jackson. Present. County Manager Bryant. Present. Planning and Zoning Director Koch. Present. Next, we'll move on to approval of agenda. I believe we have a change. We do have a change today, Mr. Chair. Um, I move to approve today's agenda with the following addition. Under new business, we are adding a new item one to call on Sheriff Jim Biker for the possible implementation of a fire ban. That new number one will move items one through eight down to items two through nine. Okay. I second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded on the agenda. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Move on to the consent agenda. I want to note we have a scheduled public hearing that was uh, scheduled for May 22nd, 2018. Uh, this is for the Whitehorn Kennels. Uh, it's an SRU, special review use. Uh, that's going to get moved to June 12th instead of May 22nd. So I want to make that notation on the consent agenda. Also on the consent agenda, we have a request for OPC 14-009 Golden Meds. We did have a request to speak on that. As chair, I'm going to allow that to uh, speak. So, Dale Carroll, if you want to come up and speak on that at this time, you can do that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Appreciate you letting me get up here to talk. Uh, I live at Ground Zero. I live right next door to this facility. Uh, I have no issue with the marijuana. It's been approved. It is what it is. I do believe, though, that... Uh, we need to start putting some kind of regulations on them for their smelling over. Uh, last Friday, last Thursday, we, it goes, there's three odors. There's either skunk, skunk, and uh, Febreze air cleaner, or there's uh, electrical fire. I started getting calls about five, six o'clock Thursday night about electrical burning, and it was bad. It was over half a mile radius of my place. 
And I guess this one here, this is uh, personal, guys. This isn't anything. I'll speak for the communities, whoever wants me to speak for them in their behalf. But I had my first uh, granddaughter three weeks ago. Two, weeks, two and a half weeks ago, she's been on oxygen. My place, there's no family functions that go on because of these odors. These places are, uh, they do what they have to, they don't do what they need to do. And I think it's up to the commissioners to step up and do something with the uh, regulations on them. These were brought on by every bo the board. Those are yours, you own those. And the problems that come with them, you own those too. I'd appreciate if there was something that you could start looking at on these uh, regulations on their odors in these uh, communities where there's houses and people close by. It's not, a, it's not asking much, but these people can do what they gotta do to uh, eliminate these problems, to move in and uh, side of these communities, you got these people that are, they've got the money, they just uh, do what they're asked to do. Brenda, you've taken, you're the legal counsel. You can make, you can tell them what they have to do, but you can also tell these people what they can do. And that's all I have to say is, uh, it's on a personal matter, and I'm a little fired up about it, so it's best that I just go sit down now, but thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Okay, with that. Mr. Chair, I move with um, the change of the public hearing date to June 12th to approve the consent agenda. I'll second. It's been moved and second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Move on to staff and elected official reports. Uh, county clerk, or no, yeah, county clerk's monthly report will be first. Yes. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. So the Total motor, motor vehicle fees, sales tax, and recording fees collected for April of 2018 were $1,224,335.06. Fremont County's portion for disbursement was $685,902.09, which is 56% of the total fees and is $113,840.36 more than April of 2017. So year to date, our office is up $270,095.04 from last year. Looking good. Okay. So keep buying those new vehicles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Mr. Chair, <clears throat> excuse me, I move to accept the county clerk's monthly report. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Move on to item B, county manager report. Good morning, Senator. Good morning. Good morning. So I just wanted to give an update on some of the projects that we have working on, right, or that we are working on right now. So I'm excited to announce that the sheriff jail improvements are almost finished. So we are hoping in the next month or so to have these wrapped up and finalized. <coughs> so we're, we have this <coughs> camera upgrade, the security upgrade, the kitchen, the laundry, and the facility is definitely much safer. Um, we're, the, We've actually had instances where we're looking at the cameras to make sure that things are happening um, the way that they said, and the sheriff has said that they've actually had some things that they've been able to solve fairly quickly with that, and so we're seeing huge um, improvements based on those upgrades, so we're pretty excited to have that project almost complete. The, um, so Fremont County was awarded $600,000 in EPA funds. So that grant will start October 1st, and it's a three-year grant in which we get $200,000 each year. And so we will be assessing sites throughout Fremont County um, and then potentially doing improvements to those sites. So we're very excited for that. And that's a zero matching fund, so it's all EPA funds. So it will be staff time as an in-kind contribution, and that's all. So we're pretty excited to move forward with that project. We were also um, tentatively awarded $1,300,000. $61,500 in emergency watershed protection program funds, which is through the Nat Natural Resources Conservation Service. Um, so we'll actually have that on the agenda for um, approval of the DSR to designate um, the projects that are wor working on um, out on the West End. So it's for the Hayden Pass fire recovery, and then we'll also have $453,000 in um, Division of Homeland Security Colorado funds. So we're pretty excited. It's a $1.8 million project in which all of that is also um, through the two different grants. 
So I also want to announce that the Fremont County website is almost complete, so we're hoping within the next month or so to have a brand new website launch. So I appreciate all of the work that John Grayson has been putting into that to completely develop and design our website. And just a reminder that we do have a countywide Facebook page, so we try to get information out there on that. And then we also have a Sheriff's Department page, Planning and Zoning page, Public Health Department page, Department of Human Services, and an airport page. So go ahead and like all of those pages to try to stay up to date with county information. And then the last thing, we are moving forward with the roof project. So that is actually going, we'll have an agreement here in the next week or so. Um, they're finalizing all of their bids and stuff. So we'll have the administration re-roof of just the west part of our building. So we have lots of projects going on. Okay. Thank you very much. Any comments to Sunny? Lots of projects, you're right. The county is very busy these days. Okay. Uh, next up uh, would be any other comments on county officials? I just have a couple of quick things, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Um, first, just congratulations to everyone involved with Blossom Festival. Last weekend, it was a perfect weekend. Beautiful out. Everybody that I saw on Monday all had sunburns, so good job. Um, that means everyone spent some time outside. So it, it was a really, really great event, and just thank you so, so much to everyone who works so hard putting that on. And the other thing that I just wanted to mention is this coming Sunday is Mother's Day. And so I just wanted to wish every single mother out there happy Mother's Day, especially my own dear little mama. So happy Mother's Day, Mom. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I like that George got all excited. <laughs> happy Mother's Day. Yeah. So to all the moms, happy Mother's Day. And, um, and kind of on the Blossom Festival, I heard from law enforcement, both county and the city, that it was one of the quietest festivals that any of them can remember so that was a good good deal so it was a good weekend okay uh, I'd like to make a presentation to Commissioner Bell for her <laughs> year of uh, being the chair last year it wasn't wasn't it not the easiest year so it was not but well thank you sir <laughs> Well, that was unexpected, but very kind. Thank you. <laughs> well, sitting in this middle seat a lot of times isn't the easiest thing in the world to do, that's for sure. Uh, any other comments on staff or elected officials? <coughs> okay, we'll move on to citizens' uh, comments to address the commissioner's matters not scheduled on the agenda. I have one of <laughs> George Story. Good morning, George. Good morning, George. Good morning, Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. First, I would like to wish all you ladies a happy Mother's Day. Thank you. And I would like to say that I hope we can all do everything we can do to get Pike Canyon Apartments up and running. We need the housing. The weather's starting to break. And I'm part of the project. I'm proud that I am. And have a good day, and I hope Journey Home is coming soon. Thank you. Thanks, George. George. Anybody else have anything that's not on the agenda? Hi, John. Good morning. Just Good identify morning. yourself, please. Good morning. John Hamrick. I live here in uh, Canyon City, across from the high school. Just wanted to say, good morning, commissioners and staff. Wigs for kids. It's still going on. They're still, the, they will still accept donations. And the only thing I would say about that is that those who can probably should. Thank All you. Right. Thank you, John. And I just add uh, with John there, uh, the commissioners uh, met with city council yesterday for an hour before their city council meeting and uh, to let everybody know where it was good conversations. Uh, we still have a lot more to talk about, but uh, we are conversing and it's been a, it, it was good conversation yesterday. Thanks, John. Okay, anybody else? Yes, sir. Oh yeah, John, I'll have to have you fill out a sheet. Okay. Yeah, there's some on the podium. Some on the podium. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Edward Vasquez. I'm the owner of Apple Valley. Could you speak into the microphone a little sure. bit? Sure. Thank you. My name is Edward Vasquez. I'm the owner of the Apple Valley Greenhouse in Penrose. Um, the marijuana cultivation um, facility that was on the agenda. And I just want to say a few comments. Um, I think we try very hard to control our odors. 
I ch think we try very hard to be good neighbors. Um, we do very well absolutely go above, above and beyond what the standards set for us. Uh, I have always gone out of my way to talk to anybody in the neighborhood. If they have issues, I'm there. Um, everybody who is surrounding the neighborhood has my telephone, they have my email, they know they can call me any time of day, any time of night, that includes Mr. Carroll. Um, I understand we're not, the, we're not welcomed by everybody, but we really do try. I think we do a good job. We are compliant. I think we are absolutely compliant, and I think we go above and beyond that. Thank okay. you. Just have you fill out, slip there. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay, we're good there. All right, we'll move on to item number one of new business. Uh, Sheriff Biker, please. Good morning, sir. Good morning, morning, morning Sheriff. Sir. Well, I said I'd be back. Um, so this morning, I'm um, coming to the board to ask them to consider to imposing fire restrictions. Um, as you all probably know, the surrounding counties around us uh, went into restrictions uh, probably long ago before we did. Um, we have had some moisture, um, but it's going to take a substantial amount and sustained amount to get us out of uh, any real fire danger. And um, so with that, um, I would ask the board to consider imposing restrictions. We would um, most likely uh, go into the lowest level of restrictions within the ban, um, and we'll get that information out to, to everyone that's uh, here and watching. Um, I spoke with uh, Chief Del Vecchio this morning, and uh, he stated uh, in trying to stay consistent within the county that the fire district in Canyon would most likely uh, also follow suit and uh, go into restrictions. Um, I, I would like to remind everyone, and I, I know that this is confusing, but um, the, this, the restrictions, if you impose them, uh, are only uh, applicable in the uh, unincorporated Fremont County outside a fire protection district. So if you live in a fire protection district like Penrose, Tallahassee, Canyon, um, if they don't have restrictions, we won't enforce our ban in those uh, areas. So just a reminder to folks. So. Okay. So this restriction, would it be a stage one? Yeah, we would, uh, I think it'd be appropriate and prudent to just go into the lowest level. Uh, there's still some pretty big impact there to some industries um, for outdoor activities, uh, welding, grinding, some of those things. Uh, but it, it still allows for some, some things to, to go on within reason. And um, right now, I, I, that would probably be the most prudent. Okay. I, I believe, Mr. Chairman, that it is up to this board. It's our responsibility to actually impose a fire ban, but it is the sheriff's responsibility to decide which stage we are at at any given moment. Is that correct? That's my understanding. Okay. No. Brenda's shaking her head. No. I'm I'm easy either way. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> All right. With okay, that, with Mr. That. Chair, uh, I would move to impose a fire ban here in Fremont County as requested by the sheriff. Resolution number 15. Okay. Did you say? So that motion is to approve resolution 15. Resolution 15, did you say stage one fire ban? Uh, no, because the stage is up to the sheriff. But he has indicated he will start at a stage one. Okay, I, I actually appreciate you being here, Sheriff, because it is very, very dry. A um, little bit of moisture was nice, but it's not enough, and I second that motion. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Thanks, Sheriff. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Move on to item number two, proclamation for foster care month in Fremont County. I believe we have Carrie Porter with us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Carrie. Thank you guys very much for letting us come today. Um, I just wanted to start by saying thank you um, to all of our current foster families and kinship families here in Fremont County. We definitely couldn't do it without them. Um, I'm also having a Mick Stump is here with me and we actually have some flyers we're gonna hand out. One of the things we're really focusing on this year for Foster Care Month is what we like to call an elevator speech. 
Um, we are posting them in all of the bathrooms um, within the Fremont County buildings. We feel it's important that all employees that work for Fremont County have a basic understanding of foster care and what it takes to become a foster parent. Lots of times um, people will say, hey, you work for the county. I was thinking about being a foster parent. Can you tell me a little bit more? And so at least knowing where to refer them to and some of the basics. And so we're really trying to get that information out this year um, and just spreading the word um, through our county employees that we definitely need more foster parents here in Fremont County. Okay. So I do have a proclamation. Okay, go ahead. Go with that? Okay. And, and get a little closer to the microphone so we can hear. Okay. Thank you. I know is it's that a good? uncomfortable. It is. That. That's okay. Okay, so whereas the citizens of Fremont County share the vision of the National Foster Care Month initiative in honoring, uniting, and celebrating families, and whereas the citizens of Fremont County have an obligation to ensure that society continues to meet the varying needs of its children and families, and whereas there are currently more than 75 children here in Fremont County whose families are in crisis and who must temporarily rely on the care and protection of foster parents to remain safe and healthy, and whereas foster families currently contribute to our community by opening their homes and he hearts to help children and families heal and reconnect, and whereas citizens of Fremont County have the opportunity to offer their gratitude and support to foster families who unselfishly share their lives and homes with foster children, and whereas there remains a continuing need for many more caring and qualified foster parents in Fremont County to further improve our service to children, youth, and families, now, therefore, we, the Fremont County Commissioners, by virtue of the authority vested in this board, do hereby proclaim May 2018 Foster Care Month, and in doing so, urge all citizens to join in a national effort to acknowledge foster parents, family members, volunteers, mentors, policymakers, child welfare professionals, and other members of the community who help children and youth in foster care find permanent homes and connections. Thank you for that, Carrie. We know how important this, this issue is to um, not only the children of Fremont County, but to the families as well. Yes. So thank you for mm -hmm. continuing to carry that message mm -hmm. and for finding new ways to uh, let people know how important it truly is. Yeah, thank you. I, I agree with that. Thank you very much. <coughs> Mr. Chair, I move to approve this resolution uh, or this proclamation making May Foster Care Month in Fremont County. I'll second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Well, our agenda does say for May of 2017, it which we did for 2017, okay, but yes, it is did. for 2018 today. So okay, with, with that, that correction. Correction. Of the agenda. Right. Yes. Thank you. Roll call, please. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Thank you, Karen. The proclamation Green. does say 18 months. Yes, it does. Okay, yes, so it does. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Thank you guys very much. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next item is a resolution recognizing Brenda Rawl for her 35 years of service to Fremont County. Don't believe Brenda <coughs> showed up today. She Brenda was unable to make it today. Yeah, and she doesn't really want a whole lot of fanfare on this. She didn't even want a retirement party is what I understand. So uh, with that, I'll go ahead and read the resolution that we put together for uh, Brenda Rawl. Whereas the Board of County Commissioners in uh, Fremont County, Colorado, regretfully accept the retirement of Ms. <coughs> Brenda Rawl as Fremont County Department of Human Services caseworker, and whereas Brenda Rawl has been a loyal and valuable employee of Fremont County from December 12, 1983 until May 21st, 2018, earning respect and admi admiration for her extraordinary level of dedication and professionalism for the county, and whereas Brenda Rawl provided to Fremont County and its families with her valuable and trusted expertise as a caseworker for decades, and whereas Brenda Rawl has provided a great service to the citizens of Fremont County for the past 35 years. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of County Commissioners of Fremont County, Colorado, hereby publicly recognize and express its deep appreciation and that of the residents of Fremont County to Brenda Rawl for her decades of devoted service to Fremont County, and be it further resolved that this resolution shall be read into the record of the Board of County Commissioners as a tribute to Brenda Rawls' service and that the official seal of Fremont County shall be affixed thereto and delivered to her. Done this eighth day of May, 2018, Kane City, Colorado. So Mr. Chair, one thing that I would say is we often talk, we also serve as the Board of uh, Social Services here in Fremont County. And one thing that we often talk of is the heart that it takes for caseworkers and for social workers to do the jobs that they do. 
Um, we sit in meetings sometimes and hear stories that bring us to tears, and I can't imagine the heart of those people who are actually working and living in that every single day, trying to do the very best that they can for the families and the children of Fremont County. Brenda Rowe has that heart. I've seen it more from her. I've, I've spoken with her, talked to her. I know the heart that she has to work with those kids, and I just would like to say, Brenda, you will be missed. So with that, Mr. Chair, I move to approve this resolution, recognizing Brenda Rowe for her 35 years of service to Fremont County. I second that. The resolution 16, is that right? This doesn't get a number. We don't get a number. All right. All right. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Next on item on agenda is the Heritage Commission annual report. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Betsy. I sit on the Heritage Commission with these folks, and they are hardworking folks. <laughs> Good morning, Betsy. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Um, we try to do this every six months, but it's been nine months since we were here last, so sorry about that. Well, thanks but, for being here today. <laughs> all right. Um, since our last report, uh, we released our seventh uh, Heritage Guide brochure called Coal Camps of Fremont County. It's been a huge success, as, as we figured it would. Uh, many thanks go to the dedication and hard work of those that worked on the project. Um, there was countless hours into the research, writing, editing, and proofing of the booklets so that everybody can see them. Um, as promised, there will be another one coming out here shortly called uh, Rocks and Fossils. <laughs> So that's another part of our, our heritage that we are showcasing. Um, hopefully it'll be out within the next couple of months. It's already in the proofing stage. So look forward to seeing that uh, when it gets out. Um, you can get copies here locally, um, also um, on our website and through the Royal Gorge Region website. So um, it's available to everybody. We lost a member to retirement uh, on our commission. Carol McNew uh, chose to step down after nine years of serving on, on the Heritage Commission. Uh, we thank her for her dedication to uh, FCHC and um, hope she keeps continuing to show up. <laughs> the commissioners appointed Judy McCormick uh, to replace Carol and we're thrilled to have her back on the board. Um, she's a good representative to the coal camps area, so she has a lot of input for us. Um, we continue to promote uh, the Lance um, Mark sites. Um, our most recent one was Barn City site, um, located in the Coaldale area, thanks to the Hayden Pass fire. Um, issues had come up, and so we now have that on uh, our landmark site registry. There was a lot of work that went into that, too, for the research, and so it was a good one. Um, we continue to fine-tune our application for the land site, uh, or landmark sites to more conform with History Colorado and uh, helping others apply for grants. We happen to have um, several different grants that, that have come out either in October or in April. Um, some of them, I think most of the ones that we helped with received the grants in October and hoping one will come in in, in April. So through, through our work and working with History Colorado, we've kind of are fine tuning everything to make it more cohesive. Um, conversations continued again for a certified local government. Uh, History Colorado, Canyon City, and Florence representatives met uh, with the FCHC Commission, Fremont County Planning and Zoning, and the commissioners, the attorney, and the county manager uh, to progress with uh, the CLG. And I thank everybody that, that has helped so far. Um, it's progressing, and, and we hope to get that uh, finalized here sometime soon. Um, FCHC also 
helped with Heritage Days this last fall. Um, we continue to uh, increase our attendance for some of the activities uh, that go on without, throughout the county. That brings in more money to the, to the county, we hope. Uh, and it also showcases our vast heritage. Um, we were asked to uh, be a part of a pro programmatic agreement with AHRA, the BLM, U.S. Forest Service, and the Colorado Parks and Wildlife. I was um, asked to go to these meetings, and boy, was it, it enlightening what BLM does and, and the Forest Service <laughs> trying to to get an agreement going to uh, preserve the heritage sites, not only in Fremont County, but uh, the full uh, Arkansas River Corridor. So um, I've, had, I've had fun with that. I also want to thank the Heritage Commission for their dedication and all that we do to, to support the heritage of Fremont County. Thank you. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so much, Betsy. Appreciate that report. Thank you. Those books that she brought up, if anybody's not seen any of them, they're, they're really good information if you're into the history of the area. And um, we actually have some up in the commissioner's office that are for sale, and then they have them in other places too, but they're very interesting books if you're into that history stuff. Thanks. Thank you very much. The hour has reached 10 o'clock. We have uh, <clears throat> two public hearings scheduled at 10 o'clock. First one is a proposed service plan for the Arkansas Valley Ambulance District. So we'll take that first. And I believe we have Dan Slater here today. Thank you. How are you, sir? Good. How are you? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first, I want to thank the, the board for taking the time to hear the service plan um, and have a public hearing on this issue. Um, in terms of how I, I would like to proceed, obviously it's up to the board. Um, I would like to introduce uh, the petitioners and have uh, Ron McFarland speak for a very short period about the necessity for a new uh, ambulance district in western Fremont County. Um, then I'll talk briefly about the service plan, uh, the logistical matters in terms of how we've gotten here, uh, and then we will specifically respond to the objections and requests for exclusion that the board has received. Um, and assuming that the board has no problem with, with that plan, I would like to introduce uh, Ron McFarland to begin um, by just introducing why, why that'd we are seeking that'd this. That would be fine. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning sir. My name is Ron McFarland. I'm Vice President of Arkansas Valley Ambulance, and I'm privileged to serve in that capacity. Uh, first thing I'd like to do is introduce and recognize a number of the folks from our community who have come today to lend their support, their vocal support, and their uh, recognition of the need for this particular move from a donation-based for a 501c3 to the ambulance district, the special district. I've spoken individually to each of you commissioners, and I appreciate your encouragement in this matter. So I would like to have all the folks who've come from the Coaldale, Howard, other areas in Western Fremont County to stand up and show their participation, please. Okay. Now these are, the, these are some of the folks who are the core of the strength of Western Fremont County. They've been around for years. In some, in some instances, some of them are, are more uh, new to the facility out there like I am. Uh, they have been through the ups and downs of the Arkansas Valley Ambulance for decades. They withstood the four years where the district or the ambulance service was hijacked by some others. They spent their money and their time to get it back. And in the two years since we achieved that uh, reclamation of the ambulance service, it has grown. It has stabilized. We have been able to overcome the almost fatal damage done to it during those four years. And we're grateful for that. But these are forward-looking people. They understand the fact that we cannot continue as a 501c3. There is just not enough support monetarily to do the kind of job that our citizens out there deserve and need. So they see the need that the kind of revenue, the kind of stability, the kind of uh, 
regular revenue that we can depend on year after year is the only way to get a more robust ambulance service and continue into the future. And so they all are here to support our service plan and we appreciate your consideration of that. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> so I think uh, Mr. McFarland has, has talked a bit about why a district is necessary and, and in fact I think the whole concept of uh, an ambulance district as a special district um, is, is tailor-made for this kind of situation, a situation where uh, a private entity simply can't, doesn't, can't create the funding to survive, but where there is definitely a need. Um, as the board knows, we've timely presented a service plan to the board. Um, I believe the service plan contains everything that the statute requires us to present to the board, um, and no petition objecting to the service plan has been filed by any uh, residents of the proposed districts. Um, we have timely given notice of this hearing, um, and I believe we've given a list and a certificate of mailing to the county attorney um, proving that. Um, we are trying to get this on the November ballot. Uh, again, what we're asking this board to do is obviously not to just create a special district, but instead simply to let us uh, go forward, collect signatures on a petition, and have the people of the proposed district vote on whether to create a new district. Um, uh, I understand there's a couple of options the board has in terms of how to proceed with this. Um, because of the timeline for the election and the need to get this in front of a district court to order an election, um, we would ask the board to vote on the proposed district today, and then if the board does approve the service plan uh, to uh, adopt a, a resolution basically certifying that that's what we did today so that we can begin collecting signatures um, after today's meeting instead of waiting until the next meeting to do so. Um, in terms of the objections, I think the statute requires us to respond to the objections that have been filed um, by various residents of the proposed district, so I will try to quickly go through those, and obviously if you have any questions, I'll be happy to try to answer those. Uh, there is an objection by an Audi story uh, complaining about infighting and confusion uh, on the current uh, uh, entity. Um, and indicating that he did not need the local service uh, the one time they needed an ambulance. Um, in response to that, I think the petitioners would respond that the hope here is that a public entity would create uh, uh, transparency and prevent the kind of infighting and confusion that you have with a private entity um, like we've seen. Furthermore, there aren't any alternative or overlapping services listed. I'm not sure that's a real uh, compelling reason to exclude that property. Carl and Susan Cooper have also indicated that they would prefer that uh, uh, the funding for the district come from a tax based on individual assets or income and not based on the property value. Uh, and, and there's a couple of other objections similar to this. However, that's really an objection that should be addressed to the legislature. We don't have a choice in how we fund this district. Um, property taxes are the only uh, real taxing me mechanism that the legislature has provided to us. And so that's the method that we have to use. Um, again, I'm not sure that's a, a reason to exclude somebody from the district. Um, Matthew Wayne Talbert has indicated that he doesn't want his taxes raised. Um, that's really an objection that he can voice at the ballot box in November, not a real objection as to why his particular property should be excluded. Robert Michael and Sharon Ray McCafferty have indicated a number of complaints. Um, they've complained that bu a budget has not been provided, that, that a multi-year operational plan has not been provided, that there's no bylaws or organizational structure, and that there's not been an indication how the mill levy was derived. Further, they have complaints about the management of the organization and a reduction in service area. Uh, in response, uh, the petitioners would indicate that a budget has been provided as part of the service plan, and that's required by law. Um, I don't know that there's a need for a multi-year operational plan, but quite frankly, that's probably more of a, an issue for the new board of directors and not necessarily for the service plan. And furthermore, to the extent necessary, if, if, if the district determines that bylaws are necessary, again, that would be a job for the board of directors that are elected by the people to do and not a part of the service plan. Um, finally, in terms of organizational structure, um, that's set forth by the statute. We really don't have a whole lot of control over how the organization is structured. Um, the Board of Directors, Directors structure is set forth by uh, the Special Districts Act. Um, the mill levy was derived simply by determining what the necessary operational budget would be for this entity and determining how much funding would be needed in terms of a mill levy and private funding through um, pay for services um, to do that. 
And finally, in terms of any objections regarding how the ambulance 501c3 has operated in the past, again, this is a different entity. So the, the, if there are concerns about how that's being operated, the people of the district will get an opportunity to have their voice in that every two years in an election in, when they elect the board of directors. And finally, as in terms of the objection about the reduction of service area, um, we did reduce the service area from the current service area so as to not overlap with the Deer Mountain Fire Protection District ambulance service. If we hadn't done that, that would actually be a, re a valid reason for an objection and, and for a reason for excluding a property from the district. Um, but because we have in fact done that so as to not overlap services, um, I think that actually is, is evidence that it's, it's not a good reason for an exclusion of property. Uh, the MPML Investment Living Trust has filed an objection that the tax is too high. Again, I think that's an objection that should be voiced at the ballot box. It's not a valid reason for excluding a property from a special district. Richard Conover has indicated that he, there are no permanent residents at his property and that he doesn't like the way the tax are, is structured. Um, as for the current existence or non-existence of permanent residents, I'm not sure that's a real reason to exclude a property. The fact is um, five, ten years from now when someone gets hurt on that property and calls the ambulance district, um, first of all, I'm not sure that the district can or would say we can't serve you because you're not paying your taxes, but it's certainly not fair to the rest of the tax paying electors of the district to require the ambulance to go serve a property that's not paying their taxes just because we don't have very many people there. And the complaint about the tax structure, again, is a legislative complaint, not a real reason to exclude the property. Ryan Canterbury has argued that he doesn't agree with the tax structure. Again, I think that's a legislative complaint and not really a complaint about um, a reason to exclude their property. Uh, Winnie Schrader has indicated just that she wishes that her property be excluded, um, but has not given any reasons. I don't really know how to respond to that uh, beyond that. Um, Tim Canterbury also has indicated that he doesn't want uh, a special district to be formed without a vote of the people um, when it was indicated to him that, I believe by Commissioner Payne, that in fact a vote of the people is necessary to form this district. He indicated that he still wished to be excluded. So I'm not real sure there's a reason there, and I don't know how to respond to that either. Um, those are all the objections um, and requests for exclusion that I've seen. Um, the requirements of the statute have been met. We're not, again, asking this board to create a new governmental entity. We're just asking this board to use its oversight power to determine that the service plan is appropriate, um, that it's in the best interest of the people of Western Fremont County, that they have a chance to vote on this, that they have a chance to sign a petition, to call for a vote on this and make this decision for themselves as to whether they want an ambulance district in western Fremont County. Hey, um, Dan? Yes. Uh, I, I want to just throw this in there, Miss Winnie, Sh Winnie Schrader. Yes. Hers is because she is a non-resident landowner in the county. Another one like you had earlier, I believe, is why she requested her property to be excluded. You said she didn't show reason. I think that's the reason. Okay. Well, and, and, and if that's the case, again, I, I think that doesn't mean that that land wouldn't still be served by the ambulance district, and I'm not sure that it, there's an indication that there's some other um, overlapping service being provided by another governmental entity, which, again, would be a valid reason for exclusion. Um, again, we're asking that this board take action today um, so that we can, <coughs> assuming the board approves it, get started with the petition process, um, but I'm certainly happy to answer any questions, um, or at least to the extent that I can't, um, Mr. McFarland certainly would be able to. You good? For now. Yeah, good for, now. for now. You good for now? Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a public hearing, so I will open the public hearing. If anybody wants to come up and speak, make sure you fill out a slip for us. So, who wants, anybody want to come up and speak on this? We got Mr. Canterbury right here. Okay. Jim, I don't know if it's necessary. I think. Okay. I think you know who I am, but Byron Alsop, for the record, from Coldale. I've been involved in emergency services in the west end of Fremont County for over 25 years. 
I've, I've seen the ups and downs of the ambulance service. I've worked mostly through the fire department, but doing that, I've done. I've worked hand in hand with AVA for all those 25, 26 years. I've been out there, and and I've seen what's what's gone on. And they've they've basically been funded hand to mouth, uh, month to month, day to day, sometimes uh, with bake sales, chili cook-offs, that sort of thing. It's, it's really you can't fund an ambulance service anymore with with bake sales. We really need to move forward, and an ambulance could cost around two hundred and forty thousand dollars. So, it really, what we're asking is, is should be a pretty easy question for you, I think, today. We're really asking you to let the voters of Fremont County, Western Fremont County, decide if they want to be taxed for an ambulance service. So that's it's a pretty easy call for a politician, I think, to say, <laughs> let the voters decide it. So I would say that um, I'm representing the, the people of uh, the uh, fire department of Coaldale, all of their fire department members, the board of directors of the Western Fremont Fire Protection District. We all are fully in support of this, as many other residents are. Hope you'll support this. Thank okay, you. Fine. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, next up, Ryan Canterbury. Good morning, sir. Good morning. I'm Ryan Canterbury, and I was one of the ones that requested to be excluded. And the reasoning for that is I'm a little confused on when it says the actual value of the ground. A lot of us that have that to be taxed on, a lot of us have agricultural ground, and we're, we're kind of assessed a little different. We pay taxes on ag, ag ground, not on how the other residents pay. And and to be honest, you're on the paper, it said it only went to a million dollars. Well, the actual value of a lot of these ranches far exceed that, you know, by multiple millions of dollars. So my, my concern is, is agriculture, are we going to be paying on actual value, like, say we have a $5 million ranch, are we paying on the $5 million, or are we paying on our ag taxes, the, the assessed value that we have? And that was, that was a comment that I've yet to have anybody answer for me, and, and I'm... It'll be assessed value. Assessed value? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Anybody else have comments, questions? Going once, going twice. Okay, I'm going to close the public hearing. <coughs> so, uh, Mr. Slater, do you have any other comments on that? I do not. Okay. Questions up here? Who wants to start off? No, I, I, I guess the comment that I have is um, I understand the folks that do want to be not included, excluded from the territory, but I also want to make it a point that it is a public vote. If this is approved, it would be a vote of the people within the proposed district to either approve or disapprove this ambulance district that's really all I need to say <laughs> it, it actually is a multiple step process as mr. Slater described so this really is the first step it also then has to go through district court and then the ultimate litmus test is going to be going to the voters do your voters want it or do they not so everyone will have an equal voice when that is said and done <coughs> okay and you uh, Dan you mentioned a couple times about the legislative is this under uh, Title 32, is that what that's under? Yes. For special district? Yes. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> I assumed it was, but I just want to make sure that's what it was. Okay. Anybody have any questions on the specific service plan? Any? I think so. So the 501c3 will dissolve if this goes through? The 501c3 will transfer most, if not all, of its assets to the special district. I think that there's still an open question as to whether it will immediately dissolve or whether it might serve as some sort of um, supplemental fundraising authority, kind of like uh, I know that uh, some of the fire districts have um, 501c3s that help support their services. Um, so I think there's some discussion about whether the corporation would continue to exist to help fundraise supplementally um, to support the, the work of the uh, people who work in the ambulance district. Is that a fair statement? I think one of the most uh, difficult parts of doing this proposed plan is setting the boundary itself and um, all of the legal explanations are needed. 
Um, but I understand that you did a really good job with that and that the boundaries actually meet. And so the, the plan, <laughs> the service plan does close. So that's a really important thing. And I just, my, I'm only mentioning that because I applaud whoever did all of the work for that because it was an immense job. It, it's a very big um, legal description and we had uh, a very good, uh, I guess, surveyor. Is it a, is he a surveyor? Uh, surveyor who, who spent a lot of time working on that. Good deal. Okay. Any other comments or questions? Yes. Okay. I do have a motion. Okay. If you're I'll take prepared. a motion. All right. Um, well, let me see. Hold on. Let me find that paper that I was just looking at. We have um, before us on our computers, we have the statutory requirements for actions on a service plan set as set before us today. Um, Mr. Chair, I am satisfied that all of these requirements have been met, that um, the, the boundaries do close, <laughs> that um, the things that need to be addressed have been addressed, that the service that will be provided is adequate. Um, there's a lengthy list here, but personally, I am satisfied that the list of requirements have been met. So, Mr. Chair, I move to approve this proposed service plan from the Arkansas Valley Ambulance District, um, and I would set May 22nd as the adoption of findings and a resolution for that date. Second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Does that make sense to you guys? Okay. So it's been moved and seconded. Why would that not make sense? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, yeah, I'm just asking. <laughs> just double check it. It's been moved and Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell? Aye. Commissioner McFall? Aye. Commissioner Payne? Aye. Motion carries. Good luck, folks. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we wish you the very best. Okay. I'll give you a minute to clear out and we'll start our second one. Thank you. Okay, we'll move into our uh, second uh, public hearing, <coughs> which is a request for a commercial development plan for Penrose Auto Savage. I believe we have Dr. Angela Bellantoni with us. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, ladies, gentlemen. This morning, um, I will be representing Penrose Auto Salvage's project for a commercial development plan. And the owner is Mrs. Elizabeth Schloop. And I, uh, she is just a wonderful resource for understanding the process of vehicle recycling. So I will speak to um, the one correspondence received by the county and uh, the new correspondences or the new uh, documents that came in since the recommendations were made. And then I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth to share with you this process on her property. So uh, Director Koch brought to my attention a May 7th correspondence from Coy Stanley um, um, stating that there is a non-compliance even though it doesn't specify according to Director Koch I understand it has to do with buffering and their property is to the north of the subject property so I uh, ask you to please turn to exhibit CDP 15.1 where there is in fact uh, a buffering partial buffering plan is proposed uh, on the sides of the property not being owned by Mrs. Schloop and her family and upon construction of the building um, as displayed in the site plan As displayed in the site plan on the screen, uh, there is a, <laughs> I need to be Vanna, I'll take the mic. I need a better dress. Um, 
The proposed warehouse, right now there is minimal buffering to the north in preparation for construction of this building. At the time when the building is constructed, the fronts will align, and from the front, oh, thank you, thank you. You can see where there will be a gate and then a fence to the property lines to the east and the west. And what kind of fence will that be? A wood slat fence. How tall? Eight foot. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a sliding gate that will be secure. So this is a secure site property in, in behind that fence. And then there is, uh, when they connect to the, to the east there, uh, the property boundary, it'll connect to the perimeter fence, and that will proceed down the east side. So the north side and the east side, do I have that right? I do, don't I? East? Yes. We'll have a buffer to the community and for visual, okay. okay. Uh, next are the two conditions, because both of those, uh, or proposed conditions, um, have been resolved. There was an email from Mr. Lewis of CDOT to Mr. Sapp on April 9th of 2018, um, clarifying that he had no issue for Fremont County to issue building permits. In one of his correspondences, he said that there could be no building permits issued until the um, accesses were all approved and checked off. And what Mrs. Schloop would like to do is get all the permits, do all the construction at once, so it interrupts her business and her property for a short period of time, and then rock and roll. So she is trying to, uh, you got this correspondence, and I believe I provided this to Director Koch, um, so that she is able to get her building permits upon approval. Um, the last condition was the uh, Mr. Moore, our county engineer, uh, requesting a stamped engineer report, which we have thought was submitted. And so what we have done, here it is in her hand, and she watched it get stamped with blue ink this morning from the engineer, and she will carry it upstairs today. And then that should be. You can just give it to me, Mr. Morris. Out. You <laughs> promise me that you will hand it to him, because there has, there has been one submitted a couple of times. Okay. He's trustworthy. Okay. Yay. Just, just wanting to be clear. So, <coughs> so you, those are the two contingency plans of what we have here. Is that what? Those are the contingency. The contingency items. items? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Excuse me. Contingencies. I. I know. I know. Sorry. Someday I'll get it right. right? Okay. okay. With that, I am going to turn it over to Elizabeth. Okay. And she is going to share with you the process and the well, history well, of the site. What we're going to do here. Okay. Or what they're going to do. Correct. Right. Is there like a fancy laser pointer for yeah, me? Okay. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And you'll have to speak a little loud so the folks on TV can hear. Because, okay. Yeah. Not a problem. Okay. Let's see if I got this. Okay. I need to go back to the other one. That's CDB 41.2, I believe. So. He's working on it. <laughs> He's getting there. <laughs> okay. There we go. All right. So this salvage yard has been um, it's been a salvage yard according to assessor's records since 1940, and it was had improvements done in 1983 and 1989. My father, Terry Earl, he bought the place in 1996. He took it over in January. We moved down. We lived in Salida before that. And, <clears throat> and he took it over. And so we've been running it as a family business. In 2014, I moved, I moved here, and I took the business over from him, and I have been running it. And um, what we're proposed, see this little building here is what we're using right now. That is our office, and we have a shop down here that we use, and we break down our cars outside the shop. And by break down, we drain them, take loosen things up, drain all the fluids, recycle all the fluids, and then we have to park the cars out in rows out here. So the proposed building here has a lean-to off the side, which will be the new breakdown area on concrete off the side, and the building itself will be used just for part storage. So what will happen is the tr my tow truck will come in, come in this entrance, come back here behind the fence, unload 
the cars. The cars will get moved, processed. Right now, all I can do is drain the fluids and then I have to park the cars complete out in the yard. This way, I will be able to pull engines, transmissions, tear most of the car apart, and then I will just have a hulk with some suspension parts in the back and then the body of the car, and that will get parked. But all my mechanical parts will be inside under cover um, out of the weather, which is kind of a problem for me right now. I, uh, I sometimes bring in late model inventory that I sell the body parts very quick. Off of a newer car, there's car accidents, people want to fix their car. Well, the mechanical parts are very, very low mileage, but they're not going to sell for five to ten years. And now I've got this engine that I have no place to store. One of my guys sells a hood off of this car, water gets in my engine. I now have lost a good amount of money of the inventory I was going to get off that car. So with this business, the model I have right now, everything is recycled on the vehicle, everything. Um, all the fluids are reused or sold or recycled. Our, um, our oil is all drained from the vehicles. We burn it on an on-site EPA-approved oil burner. Antifreeze is sold and reused in our company vehicles. Fuel is reused in our company vehicles. Um, and Freon is also recycled. So by having this new building and having it where I can have these parts, it will make it so when a customer comes in, right now a customer comes in, he needs a part pulled, I have to send one of my guys out to pull the part. It might be snowing, it might be muddy, my guys are out in the mud pulling these parts. With this, the, they'll have a nice covered area where they can pull the parts outside. It'll still be outside, but it'll be covered. They can pull the parts, and then the parts will already be pulled. So when a customer comes in and wants the parts, they'll be ready to go. Um, and like I said, everything is recycled. At the end of life, these cars are parked here. At the end of life, they're moved over into this area here. Um, anything that's left recyclable um, that's not ferrous metal, like aluminum, uh, any aluminum trim, any aluminum pieces are pulled off, any heavy iron is pulled off, and then the rest of the car hulk is then, I have someone drive in, and they load the truck, cars up on a truck, and they take them off site, and they crush them and shred them. So everything on these vehicles is, everything is recycled. Um, we, we say it's not as much cradle to grave as it is cradle to cradle. It goes right back into the system and gets reused. So having this warehouse will make my job more efficient. I'll have the same amount of employees, but we'll be able to get, we won't be running behind all the time. We'll be able to catch up and be ready to go. It won't be pull them off of one thing to go do the other because everything will be done as it comes in and we'll have a system. And this warehouse will keep my parts out of the weather. That's the main point of the warehouse is just to have a place to store my parts. Okay. Thank How many you. employees do you have? I have seven. Okay. One of the most interesting things, um, I, I sat yesterday and I read through all the pages of description of exactly what it is that you do with your business and I thought it was really fascinating because um, I think people tend to look upon the business as some sort of an auto dump where you just drop mm -hmm. it and, and it stays forever, but that's not the case at all. Um, even the title, it's the Penrose Auto Salvage, mm -hmm. and that really is what you do. So yeah. I also saw in all of that writing that um, instead, as you just said, it's not the cradle-to-grave life, life cycle mm -hmm. that we typically see, but instead it's a cradle all the way back to cradle and then mm -hmm. reusing things. And I think in today's world that's just very important. So I, I was very enlightened by um, the information I read yesterday in your presentation, and I just wanted to say thank you for that. And also, uh, we're not, I, I think sometimes people think Sanford and Sons. We all know the old show. You know, you see cars, you see oil dripping everywhere. It's, it's just a, a massive, and then they pile them up in the corner for years. And it's not like that in the 80s. Um, we, we call ourselves automotive recyclers. I'm, um, we, have a, we have a state association, and I'm a member of the board. We also have a national association. Um, and I'm a member, I'm not on the board, but my yard is a member of the association. And we have a huge network of auto recyclers. We talk to each other, we, we sell parts back and forth to each other. And this is another thing, is I'll be able to have my parts undercover so when somebody orders it from another yard, I can send them right out. But it is not, I know people think of it as the old junkyard style, and it's not that way anymore. It is not like it used to be. Okay. 
Any other questions or comments? Okay. Not at this time. Staff report. All righty. The applicant did make a full application for this project. Uh, the publication was put in the paper, notifications were sent out, and the sign was posted on the property of this meeting. On April 3rd, the Planning Commission did review this project. Uh, they did re recommend unanimously for approval. Um, as far as the contingency items, they were brought up earlier. Um, the first one was compliance with the requirements um, in the letter stated, uh, dated uh, February 28th from the Fremont County Engineer. Um, one thing that he is looking for is the pond to be built. And that goes back to referencing that you're gonna do everything all at once. And mm -hmm. so before you can get occupancy, that <coughs> pond has to be built. Yes. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, and then the second one is just a, a couple minor corrections to the drawing before we record it. So um, nothing real serious on that, but just some minor things. Um, so in the end, when, they, when and if you do grant approval of this, um, before you can have occupancy, you will have to have the buffering fence installed, the pond built, and then all of CDOT's uh, stuff taken care of. Yes. Um, so th those will be the items that you will need to take care of in that. Um, other than that, that's all I have. So would, would we all, uh, add uh, buffering as a third contingency item? It, it's, it's part of the, the permit. It's required. Part of the permit. Yeah. Okay. All right. So it's already required. It doesn't need to be an additional contingency. Okay. It doesn't. That would just be kind of piling on. Okay. This is a public hearing, so I will open the public hearing for any comments, questions from the audience. I guess I do need to state, and it was brought up earlier, that we did receive a letter from Coyle Stanley uh, regarding um, some issues out there. Uh, Ten years ago about, this, this property did apply for a zone change with the property next door to it. Um, at that time, they went through uh, most of the application, but it was never finalized. It expired and nothing was completed. So that may be what this is referencing. Um, I do believe there might be a representative for Coyle Stanley here. If they want to say anything about that, they can. So okay, we'll give them that opportunity right now. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Do I give this to you? Yeah. Then just go ahead and identify yourself. I'm Monica Jordan. I'm really here for my dad. He can't be here because of his health. And I wrote the letter for Coy Stanley. Um, I don't fully, I know some of the um, codes weren't up to enforcement years ago. So, but I spoke to him yesterday and he informed me that when they build the building that they're going to use the buffering to put the fence back up. Because right now there's no fence in the front and my dad lives to the north of it. So when you look out the window and that you strictly see the salvage yard and nothing. You know, that's all you see. But he informed me that the fence will be put up with the building. You'll have the building correct. And then the fence right, will come right up to the Go ahead and so, address, address us. Sorry. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, so that's what I found out. So okay. it's fine. So, I just so that didn't, goes up. We're good to go. You're good to go with that. Yep. Okay. As long as there's the buffering fence. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Anybody else have any comments, questions on this? Going once, going twice. I will close the public hearing. Okay, do we have any other comments? Entertain a motion. No, Mr. Chair, I've, I've got a motion for you. I, I think everything has pretty well been covered. When they finish this, everything will be in compliance, especially with your concerns on the fence. I move that we approve the request uh, for the commercial development plan Number 18-001 for Penrose Auto Salvage. With the contingencies of the pond being built. And that'll be in compliance with the engineer's letter. Okay. So just the two contingencies. And then the drawings. Okay. okay. And that's like We will need a resolution number on this. B16. Okay. Resolution 16. And Commissioner McFall, does uh, your motion also address the waiver requests? Which were? There are three, hard surfacing, lighting, and landscaping. Sorry, I missed that. Yes, it does include those waiver requests. Okay, with that, I will second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, thank you very much. Good luck. Thank you. We'll go back to our regular agenda. 
Next up was approval and authorization of Chairman's signature on the Natural Resources Conservation Service Damage Survey Report. This is the Emergency Watershed Protection Program for the recovery of the Hayden Pass flood. We were going to have Jill here. Uh, Commissioner McFall, do you have some comments on this? Well, yeah, yeah I sure can. What, what this is in reference to is the Hayden Pass um, fire that, w that happened in July of 2016. I've been literally chasing money to help with flood mitigation down below that burn scar for over a year now. And I'm finally have got some great news, I think. Sonny mentioned it a little bit ago in her manager's report, but um, NRCS, Natural Resource Conservation Service, has um, $1.8 million for us to, to go in there and do some stream rehabilitation, some bank stabilization. What we're trying to do is save property and life down below that uh, burn scar if we do happen to get any kind of flooding. So what this is is authorization uh, to sign this DSR, which is a damage survey report. NRCS goes up there and does their survey um, of the area, find out where the work needs to be done, what needs to be done, and then that's what the money, the funding is based upon. So that's what this is. Okay. I want to just add, Commissioner McFall has worked pretty hard on this out there west with this district and appreciate all the work you put, uh, put in on this. Thanks. I tell you, working with senators and congressmen <laughs> in the state and federal level and trying to push from the top and working with locals, one day there's no money and then it's kind of exciting to the next day get an email that you got this money available. So it's, um, I guess, persistence pays off. There you go. Could you address briefly um, any kind of a match that's going to need to be made? So with any um, federal grant, there's a 25% match. Um, and that's where the $452,000 and some odd cents, I don't have that in front of me right now, is our portion of that match. We, um, through persistence again, was able to get that match money from the state um, Department of Public Safety. So that's going to really help us out a bunch. So we don't ha we don't have that money to front. So that match is going to come in very handy from the state. Thank you. I think that's really important that we need to talk about that as well. Okay. So with that, Mr. Chair, I move to approve the and authorize the chairman's signature on the Natural Resource um, Service Damage Survey Report. <laughs> that's all. We do like our acronym. <laughs> I'm happy to second that. <laughs> <laughs> it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. <laughs> Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carried. Are you sure? Yeah. <laughs> Positive. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, the next item, liquor, liquor license renewal. This is a deadline waiver, late fee waiver. Uh, Dottie, do you have some comments on this? Yeah, so they get a, re uh, a reminder from our office, which they did receive, but they also get a reminder slash application, renewal application from the state of Colorado, which is required to be submitted to get um, their license renewed, and they never received it from the state. So they had to then <coughs> contact the state and get a new one generated, so it took time to do that, and they missed their 45-day requirement of getting it to us before their license expired. But they did get it to us and asked for the waiver, and. Everything else was in order. Okay. And this is at the Royal Gorge Bridge, correct? It is. Yep. And this would not have come before the board except for the deadline waiver? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. The board has to waive the, the late fee and the deadline. Okay. Wishes? Yes, Mr. Chair. I move to approve the waiver of the deadline and any late fee that may be associated for the liquor license renewal for Service Systems Associates Incorporated up at the Royal Gorge. And the renewal. And the renewal. Second. Thank you. Okay. It's, Thank been you. Moved. it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Next, we'll move on to um, OPC 14-001. That's optional premise cultiv cultivation for today's healthcare two. This is uh, doing a transfer of ownership. I believe we have Natalie Rommel. Yes, there. Rommel. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for being so patient. No Have problem. Thanks today. for the time today. I appreciate it. Okay. So what do we got going on here? 
Um, I've had the opportunity to purchase the business from the current owner, which I am pursuing and would like to do. So I'm asking for your approval for the transfer of ownership from today's healthcare to my company, which is National Green Source. Um, it is the two. OP, well, I guess we're doing them separately. There are two. So this first location is, um, oh, let's see, on C Street. This is the greenhouse facility that I have appeared in front of you um, on a couple of occasions before. So um, that's what I'm here for. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, Matt, staff report. All right. Natalie is a, a co-owner now um, of this property. I mean, you already have state approval for the transfer, correct? Correct. Um, uh, we reviewed the transfer application. We don't find any issues with it. I do have a couple questions for you, though. Sure. Um, our code enforcement did make a site visit um, two weeks ago, mm -hmm. found some issues with the odor mitigation. Um, have those been fixed? Yes. The okay. um, system was not working. Um, there was some issues with the lines. Those were replaced. Um, in addition to that, I have been pursuing um, some options to automate the system so that it gives me a warning if it's not working. It also gives our site manager um, a warning uh, if it's not working, and it also to be monitored uh, by a cell phone or tablet. So when our manager goes home for the night, he can see if the system is continuing to operate. Um, that was part of the issue when they were coming in. It wasn't operating. Um, so I'm looking to do that. I don't know if that uh, technology is available, but I have a couple solutions um, in place of that. So that's the main goal for that. But so far, the, the smell has been rectified then? Yes, correct. Um, also, the light mitigation. On the greenhouse on the south side, we were out, I was out in that area about 12.30 Saturday morning and noticed the, that the, the blackout was not installed or, or operating. Um, is there an issue with that greenhouse? Is this on the, the hard greenhouse or the Quonset? The Quonset. Okay. The Quonset does have a blackout system. It is operational. Um, those lights are on 24 hours a day in that location. So as far as I know, it's operational. Um, I can check on that. Uh, we did change to some lower um, overflow lighting. Um, we're currently upgrading the facility to that to kind of mitigate that extra light going. But um, we do have a blackout system that's been built in there, as far as I know, operational. So I can check on that if you for please. sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, other than that, that's all I have. Okay. All right. Anybody have any other comments on this? Entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I move to approve the transfer of ownership of OPC 14 001, today's health care, to, to National Green Source. Okay. Okay. I will second that. Um, just with the I'm note, <coughs> excuse me, with the note, Natalie, that it's a little bit distressing to me to be hearing um, that our code enforcers are finding issues that are happening that you as an owner didn't know about. You need to take care of business. Absolutely. Thank you. Okay, with that, any other further comments? It's been moved and seconded. Roll call, please. Commissioner McFall? Aye. Commissioner Bell? Aye. Commissioner Payne? Aye. Motion carries. Move on to the next item. Thank and you. Natalie, you're still up. This is 14 005, the OPC. Again, it's a transfer. Yes. So, this is our additional location, which is off of Highway 115, um, the small building that's located there. So, same deal. I have the opportunity to purchase the business, which includes this cultivation location as well. Um, this is the facility that does our. Um, genetics, cloning, mothers, um, and non-flowering plants at that location. Okay. Staff report. Um, again, we did receive the full application on this. Um, this is a good facility. It's a, a, a permanent structure, so it's totally enclosed. Um, with them not being flowering plants, we don't have the odor concerns. And with it being enclosed, there's no lighting concerns. And so we, um, we do recommend approval of this transfer uh, on this one. Okay. Comments or questions? Nothing from me. Okay. Entertain a motion. 
Mr. Chair, I move to approve OPC 14-005, transfer of ownership from today's health care to National Green Source. Second. Okay. It's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Have a great Thank day. Thank you. Move on. Next item. It's a resolution appropriating additional sums of money to defray expenses and excesses of amounts budgeted for and appropriated by Fremont County. For the budget year, year ending December 31st, 2017. Uh, Sonny, you have a couple comments on this? Yes, so as we finalized the year and closed it out and went through our audit um, the last week of April, there was actually one additional entry that the auditors recommended we make, which is actually why we're having to do another budget amendment. So this is an allocating an additional $100,000 um, to self-funded insurance for the 2017 budget year. Okay. This would be resolution 17? 17. Yes. Okay. Mr. Chair, I move to approve resolution number 17, appropriating an additional sums of money to the defrayed expense in excess of amounts budgeted for 2017. All second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Commissioner McFall. Aye. Commissioner Bell. Aye. Commissioner Payne. Aye. Motion carries. Okay, and with that, no further business coming before this board. We are adjourned.